Hey, I'm Don Carr, and today we're going to talk about how to set up an acoustic guitar. And we are talking with an expert here, Mr. Ben Armour. Ben, good to see you, man. Good to see you, Don. Ben is the lead luthier at Sweetwater's Guitar Workshop. Ben, here we are at your bench. Nice bench, by the way. Thank you. So, when you get a guitar, mm -hmm. what is the first thing you do if you know it needs a repair? Well, the first thing any qualified like repair tech is going to do is they have to inspect for physical damage. Right. Because you know, customers come in and off the street, they might not have known that there was some damage to the guitar, specifically the bridge and the headstock area. So the very first thing that any tech is going to do is they're going to look over the guitar and make sure that there's no physical damage before you go any farther. Right. So it's a visual inspection of the entire guitar, you document any physical damage that you see, and then you know that you're safe to kind of go to that next step. Okay. So the next step to me is always humidity. So humidity in an acoustic guitar is it's it's what swells the top and shrinks the top. So that's affecting your action. It's affecting how a guitar sounds. It's how a guitar plays. So when things are cold, your heat is running, your house is dry. The action is going to come down. The wood is shrinking. That's when we have cracks. That's when the biggest complaints are my guitar buzzes now. Your your top is actually shrunk. It's come down, and your action came down with it. So you'll also have uh, sharp fret ends. You'll have cracks in the fretboard, cracks into the top. So like, that's the scariest is dry. Uh, when things are really wet, you can actually start to see braces pop out the side. The top bellies up, your action's really high, and your guitar is muffled. We're looking for about 45%. We put a hygrometer in every guitar, and we measure the guitar. Right, right. So OK, so you check the humidity, and then the next mm -hmm. step is? The next step is, is to start looking at the guitar. And I start at the nut end of the guitar. So you're gonna take the guitar, you're gonna be looking at nut heights, you're gonna sight down the neck to look for relief. So is it back bowed, is it straight, is there's the neck in relief. Yeah. And then you kind of start moving down the guitar, you're gonna be looking at the bridge, you're looking at the saddle. You're really looking for, is there anything wrong with that guitar? Like, do I see anything out of place? Adjusting your nut height affects mm -hmm. your height at your saddle also. So we're gonna start here and make sure that's correct and then you start moving down. So Okay, yeah, so that's kind of the whole soup to nuts inspection part of it. And we've got a guitar here, we're gonna go through the checklist on it, let's do it. Okay. Okay, so take us through it, please. All right. Well again, like we said earlier, we're gonna start with the physical inspection of the guitar. Mm -hmm. We're just going to make sure that it, there is no damage that the customer didn't know about, or that we were unaware about. Next thing we're doing, we're going to get this thing tuned up. So already we heard a problem. I don't know if you noticed it, but one of the complaints that it's here for, right? We have an open yeah. buzz. So we know that we have an issue on this end of the guitar already. Now we're gonna take a look at the relief of the, the neck. Absolutely no relief in this guitar. We'll move up to the nut here. We're going to give it the old tap test. We're looking for a bounce at the first fret uh, the numbers are really small. It's about six thousandths if you really want to get into it on a closed number. These are all pretty good. So now we're going to move down. We're actually going to take some height measurements at the 12th fret. And all these numbers get recorded so that we know exactly where the guitar was when it came in and we know exactly where the guitar is when it left. So. If they're not happy where it was when it came in, we know we don't want to be there. <laughs> so right. we want to come up with some new numbers. So we're in tune. We have no physical damage. We noticed a problem here at the nut already. So to really go any farther, we, the neck is back bowed. We're going to have to make a truss rod adjustment. Most, like any nut, basically, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Right. This is a single action truss rod, meaning that it's only working in one direction. So we're going to loosen up this neck. Okay, so you're loosening at this point. Yep. So the neck was back bowed, meaning that it was coming up this way. Right. So relief is going down, straight line is a straight line. So we want a, we want about six, eight thousandths of relief is really where we're, we're trying to get to. So I'm going to back it off too far so that 
when you tighten the truss rod, that's your final movement. You never want your final movement to be going to loosening a truss rod, because then the neck still has a chance to move. Ah. So you always want to tighten the truss rod as so your final move. So start from a loose spot and same, tighten into it's it. It's the same concept of when you put strings on. Right? right. So you tune up to the note, you don't tune down to a note. So Ben, I noticed when you're adjusting the truss rod, it's not moving very much. What's your philosophy there? Yeah. You really want to do about a quarter turn at a time. Mm -hmm. And really, every adjustment that you do to the truss rod is also affecting you're, you're being in tune anymore. So you do a quarter adjustment, and then really you should be going back and retuning the guitar just to make sure that you are in perfect balance when you're done. So now we're gonna take another look at that relief. That is looking much better. So now that you've set the relief, is it check the final numbers? Is that the next step? Yep, it's time to see where all the numbers are at now that the neck has been properly set. Great. What we're gonna do is we're going to measure at the nut. We will record each and every nut measurement. The low E is at 27 thousandths. That is seven thousandths more than I would like to see. We are at 22. And going down the line, 20. 19. 19. And 16. So we have a couple that are out of whack. This is too high, and that's gonna be causing that intonation problem at that mm -hmm. first fret. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the right gauged file, and we are going to address that right here and now. Put the string off to the side, and we're gonna take a couple swipes with the file. Whenever doing work, adjusting height, you really want to go slow because you can't go back. If I go too low, we're talking about a new nut, and new nuts are longer than a setup. So I have adjusted it. It's really about 20 thousandths plus or minus 4 thousandths is about industry standard for nut heights. So what we're trying to do here is just get to a comfortable level. We're at 25, I'm a thousandths away. We're going to take two more swipes and we're going to have that set. So when you're filing, it's not just a simple file at the angle of the peg head. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of a roll. Now you want to keep the, the front really nice and tight, and the back you can kind of swoop it open. That's called a splay angle, and that's so the string goes through smoothly. Take one more quick check. We are good. So the other problem that we had was that G string with the open. So we're just going to take a visual look and see what's going on in the slot. My height was good, so I know that's not the problem. It could be filed incorrectly, it could be too tight, it could be chipped off in the front. So really what I'm looking when I move the string is you're looking for really subtle things, but you can see where the string is resting. Mm -hmm. So when I look at that, you can see that the front is chipped away. So my height was a little bit too high, so I have enough to work with. So right now I just have to, again, grab the right gauged file, and we have to reestablish the front as the leading edge. It's, there's a lot going on in here. It looks easy, but there's really a lot going on down here with how a guitar plays. I'm already hearing the string going out clear. Still have a really good height. Nice. So our relief is set. My nut height is set. Now I'm down to the 12th fret to measure the action. We are in, in plain position. The neck goes into a little bit more relief. Gravity's involved, the strings go away. Mm -hmm. So if you can, always put the guitar in plain position. Yeah. And then we're going to just visually take a look at the 12th fret. So really, we're ready to take the strings off. That's the next step. Now we can safely remove the saddle. Mm -hmm. A saddle on an acoustic guitar, properly fit, when you flip it over, it shouldn't fall out. Now if you had a pickup in the guitar, you need it a little bit looser, so that it is a pressure sensitive transducer under there, a piezo, so you need that really smooth fit. When it's an acoustic, it really should be a little more tighter. I have this nice tool here. Now in my head, I kind of had to remember how much we had to remove. And okay. So we're gonna move over to my granite block. And what this tool is doing is making sure that the bottom of the saddle is completely flat. So we can just run it down there. And we are flat. Always good to take some Scotch-Brite or something else to the top of the saddle. And what I'm looking for are burrs. Is it chipped? 
you know, this is the time when it's out to really take a look at those things. Take a look at the overall condition of the bridge. Does it need to be conditioned with actual oil? In this case, it looks in great condition. The humidity is really good on this guitar. Nothing needs to be done to the bridge. But it's when you take those strings off, take the saddles off, it's a great time to really take care of those problems that you can't when the strings are on there. So now, we believe our action's set. We'll know when we get those strings on. Our relief has been set. Action's been set at the nut. So now it's really, it's kind of time for some cosmetic stuff on the guitar. So you need time to get all the sweat and grime and gunk off the fretboard. Scotch Bright is my preferred. Steel wool does great. And we're just gonna come down. What I always tell my guys is, is almost try to polish that fretboard and then you'll take care of the frets. So you push them down pretty hard. Just gonna polish up those frets. So I am a little crazy when it comes to fretboard oil in that I don't want to use too much. Too much oil will go down into your fret slots. If you're really crazy about it, you're gonna actually start to affect the glue bond between the fretboard and the neck. So it's used sparingly, but when needed, you can see that it brings back the, like, the black luster. So it's also, another really good time to take a look at your tuners. Simple tap test will let you know if there's something loose. The post can always rattle a little bit, but you're really looking for, is there a washer loose? Is the back loose? So I'm gonna inspect the screws, gonna make sure everything's nice and tight. These are great. I think the final part of any setup is to make sure that the customer's happy with the product. Oh. Took care of that. Mm -hmm. Took care of that. Action's been corrected, neck relief is back where it's supposed to be, I and mean, this guitar is ready to go for, yeah. for another year. Nice work, Ben. <laughs> nice work. Ben, thanks so much for doing this, man. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Don. It's been a pleasure. All right. And thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you've learned something about how to set up an acoustic guitar. If you have any questions, you can start at Sweetwater.com. <laughs>